Well, welcome to the podcast. I am joined today by uh, two of the most important young ladies in my life, uh, my daughters, Campbell and Kennedy. And uh, we are today talking about life as a pastor's kid. So I came to both of you, when was it? A couple of months ago? And just asked if you'd be willing to come on the podcast and talk a little bit about your unique experience as my daughters. And you said yes. Um, you actually said yes a little too eagerly, so I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little too, ner- I'm a little nervous as to why I didn't script this. Like you can say whatever you want to say, but I think this will be a great uh, insight uh, into your lives. So, Campbell, why don't we start with you? You're getting ready to be 18 yes. here in another week, uh, and then Kennedy is uh, 15. Mm-hmm. So, Campbell, tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, what you love to do, uh, so that way anybody who's meeting you for the first time mm-hmm. will know a little bit about you. Yeah. Um- I mean, my name's Campbell, as he said. Um, yeah, I'll be 18, and I'm a se- high school senior. Um, I love reading, writing, mm. anything with stories or creativity. You always have, yeah. Yeah, that's what I enjoy. Uh huh. Yeah. Anything else? I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're fine. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Kennedy, tell us a little bit about you. What do you love to do? Um, I I'm gonna be a sophomore in high school. Mm-hmm. And um, I love art, like I love to draw, and I also love music and theater. Yes, yeah, you're yeah. both uh, yeah. into theater. You both have been in plays. Mm-hmm. Kennedy is an incredible artist. I'm not just saying that because I'm a proud dad, but she's <laughs> an amazing artist. So, thank you guys for joining me on the podcast. We are at the time of this recording. This is like late July, so. Summer is beginning to kind of wrap up, and uh, we had a family vacation. When was it? Last month? Yeah, it was last month. Yeah. It was in June. Yeah. We went to Cancun, uh, an all inclusive um, resort, which was the first time you guys had been to an all inclusive when you were really little, but this was the first time you remember. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what was the highlight of uh, Cancun? Kennedy, what did you love most about Cancun? I, I think all of like the food, like, <laughs> yeah. it was all like, free whenever we were there mm-hmm. just like get it well, it wasn't really want. free but it kind but of felt free it yeah. felt free to like prepay because i you. didn't have to pay for <laughs> <laughs> but like i just get it anytime that i wanted so that was probably my favorite part what was your favorite food there i think you um, told me about i don't know i liked i mean i liked the coffee the coffee and mm-hmm. um the nachos yeah mm, it's a good yeah. combo did you eat the coffee and the nachos together no okay that's good <laughs> yeah cadence our youngest sister she had like three plates of fries a day uh-huh. she was enjoying that yeah yeah mm. lots of uh room service french yes. fries and chocolate cake yes that, that chocolate cake that was me yeah yeah so what about you campbell any highlights of the trip i mean i liked that we could just kind of do whatever and mm-hmm. it was very relaxing yeah, it was pretty chill it was beautiful mm-hmm. the water yeah, yeah. It was great. Well, it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to talk today um, about the um, both blessings and the challenge of being my daughters. So um, I've said this to both of you privately and individually. We'll say it publicly as well Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, I volunteered uh, to do this job, signed up for it. Uh, You didn't. You were born into it. Um, we haven't always been in a big church. You guys don't really remember like when you were really, really little, like we were in a lot Mm -hmm. smaller churches. So the pressure, uh, I mean, even in a small church, the pressure for a pastor's kid is there maybe even more so because Mm -hmm. it's, it's. Uh, a smaller environment, lots of people looking at you. It's always a little bit of a fishbowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, we moved here when you were both really young. I mean, Campbell, you were maybe four or five. And Kennedy, you were just like- a baby when we came here. And uh, um, and so the church was a pretty decent size when we got here. and It's just continued to uh, grow bigger. So with that has come, I mean, I think our church overall has done a great job of um, you know, loving you guys well, giving you your privacy, but at the same time, there is that element of where everybody sort of knows you, but you don't necessarily know everybody mm-hmm. else. So, uh, tell us just a little bit about um, what you uh, what, tell us about your experience in your own words, um, being a pastor's kid. Um, I mean, it's not all bad. Yeah, but um, for me, like the 
most prevalent experience is people coming up to me and being like, oh my gosh, Campbell, you're getting so big. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> I have never seen you before. And then it's mm-hmm. like that awkward exchange. Like, I don't know if you know me. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. 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 That can be, that can be awkward at times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's, um, also sometimes with other people who go to the church, there's kind of like preconceived notions, like they expect to know what I'm like. Mm. Um, Mm-hmm. even if they know nothing about me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, that can be hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's like almost like a set of expectations is yeah. placed upon you. Since your dad knows a lot about the Bible, mm-hmm. then, you know, you clearly probably know where that yeah. verse is in Lamentations yeah. and you yeah. may not know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Kennedy, what about you? What's the, what have been maybe some of the challenges or the things um, about being a pastor's kid. Well, there's like, I mean, ever since like elementary school, then people would just decide not to like be friends with me because they thought I was going to be like some kind of judgmental like person. Mm. And and then just like last year, and they're finally like, hey, you're not anything like I thought you'd be. Mm. And I don't know what how to take that. Mm. And like, especially, you know, like teachers and like adults and stuff would... Um, it's like they didn't know what else to talk to me about mm. besides that. Mm. And so I would just like ask a question in class and then they'd be like, oh, by the way, I'm joining a small group at Trader's Point. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> like, I don't know anything about that, but good for you. And so it was like just so awkward. It's like, it's like they, they don't, they think I'm a certain way. Mm. And mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And you both have like the sort of unfortunate experience of being a pastor's kid in the realm of like social media. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Kennedy, I know you and I have specifically talked a little bit about that. Like, what's that like for you when somebody comes up to you because they think that they know you because they follow me on social media? I think that's probably the worst thing. Yeah. Is like, um, I don't know, like, They'll come out to me and be like, hey, I saw that you did this. I saw that you mm. did this. And it's like uncomfortable because it's like, well, what, how do you know that? Like, and mm-hmm. like the story that I like held on to the most was in like seventh grade. I think I was like 13. And um, I had dressed up as Harry Potter mm. for Halloween. Mm-hmm. And I think you like posted something about it. And so I like, it was in lunch. And a teacher from the other side of the room was like, hey, Harry Potter. And I was like, what the and then everyone started like laughing and in the hallways people mm. would just like quote the movies and stuff and mm. around me and mm. and it was just so embarrassing because I I didn't want anyone else to know about that it was mm. just supposed to be like a family thing mm. and so um and like you know in, in class then a teacher would be like hey I saw that you um like were skating on your pond or something like that and I'm like that's kind of weird that you know that but okay mm. and it was just like it's hard because um teachers don't like follow their students parents on social media it's not like a normal thing Mm -hmm. but to them they're just following their pastor Mm -hmm. and so but the but to me they're following my dad so it's like Mm -hmm. it's weird for me but not for them yeah right yeah Yeah. i I feel like it's like um it's like your teacher a teacher student relationship should be professional like it's a professional relationship um and then they get a glimpse into your personal life that you didn't agree to, you didn't allow them to do that, and you don't have that same glimpse into theirs. And so it feels like almost a power imbalance. Mm. It's, mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it would probably be, that that would be a perspective probably not apparent to a lot of people. Yeah. Like, I don't think anybody would intentionally yeah. want to make oh, you feel no. awkward. It's not an intentional thing. I mm. mean, to them, they're just being friendly and they're like, oh, I saw this about you. Mm-hmm. But like, I can totally see how that can be uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even I've tried to be um, more conscientious of that, mm-hmm. I think. I mean, I, I, yeah. I probably um, could always, you know, there's room for improvement on all that. I think as you girls have, and you're, you're, you do have an older brother and a mm-hmm. younger sister. I want to clarify that you're not my only kids, but, <laughs> um, but, uh, as you guys have gotten older, uh, me trying to be much more conscientious of yeah. that, especially like in sermon illustrations, 
um, just trying to be aware of that. And I, I, there's probably times whenever I've kind of messed that up, but I'm much more conscious. Like when you were really, really little and you were yeah. in the kids ministry, you didn't, you weren't listening to me preach. Yeah. Now it's like a whole other layer of like accountability to knowing that my teenage yeah. kids are in there while I'm preaching, but recognizing, and if I am going to use you as a sermon illustration, it's always my intent to run mm-hmm. that past you first. I never yeah. want you to, you know, hear that for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and then give you a chance to veto it. Like, no doubt, I'm not comfortable with you mm-hmm. sharing that. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you're good about like, cro- like coming to us first, but I've like in the past had people come up to me and they're like, I can't believe you did that. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was like three. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It wasn't like last week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would be, uh, I know, uh, you know, Campbell, you know, you and I've talked a little bit about, I don't know how old you were. It was here in Lions Park in Zionsville. <laughs> I think your older brother was in a little league game. Yeah. And there was a day like you were pretty proud that I was a pastor. <laughs> and so like talk, oh, not that you're not now, but yeah. like, but it was a different kind of element, but like mm-hmm. talk a little bit about uh, that experience. Yeah. I um, forget. Like, there was a boy that was what, yeah, picking so on you or these, these two boys. And at, at the time as a kid, I was much more bold than I am now. Um, <laughs> and to me, like, my dad being the pastor, I didn't fully know what that meant. To me, it was just like, oh, he's the boss. Mm. Boss is something. Mm. I didn't really understand it. I was very young. But there are these two boys, and they were climbing up this tree that was, like, perfect for climbing. Mm. And one of them had, like, this big stick. And they were like, if anybody tries to come up here, we're going to hit them over the head with this stick. And I wanted to climb the tree. And so I was like, well, if you don't let me climb the tree, then I'm going to go get my dad because he's the pastor. <laughs> and like, I don't know why not. Not a pastor, the pastor. The pastor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and to me, that was such a threat. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and one of them backed down. The other one didn't. I got my dad and it was fine. But yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I, I was... remember that day. I remember you were like so proud. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I remember like, it too. It's like, yeah, maybe there's come a day when she, she's probably not going to pull that card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Well, I think that, you know, one of the things that um, uh, I and your mom, you know, we've we've talked about this a lot. Like there, there's definitely like these unique challenges in being in full time ministry and then having kids. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted like your faith to genuinely be your own and trying to guide you in that. That's not a decision that we can make for you, but really trying to walk with you through that. And I know that, uh, Campbell, you were, you were eight when we baptized you. Is that right? Or yes. You, yeah. You were eight. I was 10. And Kennedy, you were 10. Um, and, uh, both those experiences were very different. Like Campbell, mm-hmm. you got baptized here at Traders Point in a service, mm-hmm. you know, Kennedy, uh, baptized you in, uh, Nana and Papa's house in Missouri in the swimming pool one summer. And so we had the, those kind of conversations around that and then recognizing, you know, even, uh, you know, uh, uh, 10 and eight, uh, aren't super, super young, mm-hmm. but obviously you guys are in very different stages of your life mm-hmm. right now as teenagers and recognizing that as parents, that we were trying to guide the conversation, but we weren't, that wasn't something we were trying to do to you. You know, yeah. it's like, we're going to make you saved by getting mm-hmm. you baptized at an early age, just because you know the Sunday school answers, but really trying to be conversational with you. But then recognizing that you, you made a decision as an, as a 10 year old, as an eight year old to give your life to Christ, we baptized you and then walking with you after that mm-hmm. to, to continue to help you make your faith your own not unlike anybody else but there is that like kind of unique pressure kind of like within a church and i wanted i've I've wanted to as i said lots of room for growth and improvement but i i always said like when you when you guys um leave our home whenever that is you know 30 35 years old i don't know i mean you decide to get married you know uh, um it's a joke um but uh when you leave our home that we want you to your faith to be your own and that we don't want you to just say that you're a follower of Christ just because your dad was a pastor. So mm-hmm. talk a little bit about just like what that kind of process for you has been like, your relationship with Jesus, mm-hmm. the ups and the downs. You know, it's, it's not like just because you're a pastor's kid, it means your spiritual life is always mm-hmm. great. You know, yeah. there's there's hilltops and there's valleys. So yeah. what would you share about that? How would you encourage others through your own story? I mean, for me, like up until like eighth grade, like it was very much so like, well, obviously I'm a Christian because like, you know, my parents are and like, mm. you know, everybody like that whole thing just kind of like with following without question kind of, but like eighth grade freshman year, I kind of started like questioning things like, why am I doing that? Mm-hmm. Why should I do that? 
um, and kind of looking, um, looking like inwardly and doing my own research and, um, trying to decide what I believe. And so like, there was a time where my faith wasn't as strong, but I think that that's important for growth Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. to have those, like you said, ups and downs. And I think that that period of doubt made my faith stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, because mm-hmm. now my faith, I can say, is my own, yeah, and not somebody else's. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things, you know, Campbell, you're a really gifted writer. You love to read. You're very deep, um, and I mean that in a really good way. Yeah, I um, but uh, I, um, there have been occasions whenever I've been curious uh, to know, like, hey, I wonder, like, from a perspective of somebody from another generation, how like, mm-hmm. my message will hit. So I've let you read my sermon notes mm-hmm. ahead of time, and and I've just said, hey, you know, unvarnished, like, give me your feedback on stuff, mm-hmm. and and you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate that, but it's made it better, like, to, yeah. to help understand through that perspective. Um, Kennedy, what about you? Is there anything you'd share in that? Um, not that you've arrived in your faith, but you know, can you remember that time when um, we baptized you and then just as you're kind of processing through your relationship with Jesus? Um, I think like when I was young, like even when I was baptized, mm-hmm. I kind of just was like, um, I would learn something in, I don't know, Bible class or church and I'll be like, I don't understand this, but it doesn't matter because it's in the Bible, so I have to agree with it. Mm. And, like, um, I kind of learned, like, if I don't understand it, I need to, like, actually, you know, read more, ask someone or something. Like, I can't, I don't just have to, like, not, like, push down all the questions. Right. And um, whenever I was, like, baptized, then I remember I had a whole conversation, like, with mom about, like, what, like, heaven was and stuff. Mm. And it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of, kind of the same as like Campbell, but it was also very different. Right. Yeah, for sure. And I appreciated that about you. You guys are never afraid to ask really good questions and sometimes really hard questions, and that's part of it's part of growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so important. Um, you know, as you kind of look at like your friends and kind of the culture around us, like what do you think like teenagers are wrestling with the most nowadays? Like what's, what's hard about being a teenager? What are the challenges and how can adults and how can parents encourage you? I think it's a lot of peer pressure and it's also a lot of, um, fear for the future. Hmm. Um, I know that's a big thing with a lot of kids my age today Hmm. is, I mean, I'm about to graduate and like going off to college and there's a lot of kids that are really scared for their futures and like, Hmm. are they going to be able to, um, take care of themselves and, Mm. you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be really scary Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And then like trying to, like a lot of people tell you like, enjoy your high school years. Those are like your prime. And like, it's not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And like, if if high school is prime, then that's depressing for me. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, I don't know. Like, it's like, don't, ever tell kids that even if your high school was your prime personally mm. I think that's a little sad but mm-hmm. if your high school was your prime don't expect your kids high school years to be their prime because yeah, don't, don't live fly vicariously through them yeah. yeah because it also it just makes them dread the future mm-hmm. i mean the future is scary mm. we don't know what the future is always scary but mm-hmm. like don't just let us let us figure it out don't don't try to tell us what's easy. Hmm. That's good. That's good counsel. Kennedy, what about you? What, what are some of the challenges do you think? Um, I think like, even if it like sounds corny, like just the saying, like be yourself hmm. is like really hard hmm. to do. Hmm. Like when you, you feel like that you have to do something that someone else is doing or like act like something else to like be a a better person or even like um you just you just feel like that you can't just be yourself because you're not going to get anywhere Mm. like you know you have to try to um get people to like you I guess Mm -hmm. and or else you're not going to have any friends or like Mm -hmm. you know there's no point in like school at all like you know and 
I think that's like really hard, like especially like for me because people already assume things about me. So like it's yeah. hard to like prove them wrong mm. and tell them that, hey, like I'm actually not like that. Like I'm myself. I want a chance to actually be me, but it's really hard to not just like pretend like I'm a completely different person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So probably that. Yeah, that's so good. That's mm-hmm. so good. I mean, be yourself when you're still trying to figure out mm-hmm. who you are. And- yeah. And all the preconceived notions that can come around yeah. with other people. But like, um, tacking onto that, there's like it's it's hard like trying to fit in. But as someone who has tried really hard to fit in and has flitted through so many social groups and circles throughout my school life, um, just like if you're if you feel like that you have to fit into a mold for your friends to like you, they're not your friends. Mm-hmm. and you probably shouldn't be friends with them yeah and you will find the people who love you for you mm-hmm. it might take time and it might not be during school because people in school they're all trying to fit a certain mold yeah but they're gonna realize that they don't need to mm-hmm. and that's one thing that i've seen like as i've gone through the like as i've gone through each grade in high school people slowly realize oh i don't have to fit into this specific thing to be liked and you mm-hmm. will find your people and you will be so much happier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's great. That's great counsel. Um, so, you know, about, uh, uh what, eight, nine months ago, mm-hmm. uh, you started dating. Yes. So uh, I know that there's probably some dads out there listening. There's probably some daughters out there listening. Uh, this might be somewhat kind of interesting. <laughs> um, uh, first boyfriend, right? Yes. I mean, you've probably had crushes and stuff, but this would be the first, yeah, like boyfriend. So let's let's talk just a, a little bit about about that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I know that uh, I kind of um, a lot of dads will relate to this whenever their daughters start dating. It was like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna you be you know uh, lifting weights and mm-hmm. cleaning my gun when he comes over, <laughs> you know, to intimidate him. And I kind of played into that role when uh, he first <laughs> came yeah. over, and. Um, Let's talk just a little bit about the conversation that you had because you sat me down, mm-hmm. which um, was, I don't know, maybe the first that that's ever happened. <laughs> and uh, talk just a little bit like about your perspective, like mm-hmm. w- about that conversation. Yeah. Um, I mean, I sat him down and I, like we talked and I was like, don't do that, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I know, like we talked and one thing you said was that you were scared of being replaced mm-hmm. and... Um, I remember saying something along the lines of like, he can never replace you because mm. you're my dad. That role can't be filled by anybody else. Mm-hmm. And I care about what you think of him more than anybody else. Mm. He's my boyfriend. That is a completely different role in my life. And I want you to be a part of it. Mm. Um, but he's not going to replace mm-hmm. you. He, it's a new, It's a new thing in my life. Mm-hmm. It's not replacing something else. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was so good. And it was uh, so mature of you mm-hmm. to have. And you made me cry and then you <laughs> cried and it was a whole thing. Yeah. But but uh, I really appreciated the fact that you were that forthright mm-hmm. uh, with me. And, and I think that it brought us closer together. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. that's been good. And something to say to like parents out there is like there's one it's one thing to be protective of your kid, but you also need to give them the space to make mistakes while they're still like living with you. And while they're still young, because then they have you as their safety net. Mm -hmm. Um, But then if you never let them, you know, make mistakes or make bad dating choices or whatever, Mm -hmm. then whenever they're out in the world, they're going to make those mistakes. Yeah. And then they won't have you as their safety net anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so I think it's really good to give kids the chance to explore those things Mm -hmm. and to obviously, you know, if there's something that you feel like you need to protect your kid from, protect your kid. But let them let them kind of go out and explore on their own and like for me with dating like i want to be able to have the chance to make my own decisions and um like you know i chose to date Mm -hmm. my boyfriend and it's been great and um like being able to make that decision and knowing that you guys have been supportive of that has been really nice yeah good yeah uh, I appreciate the way you're articulating that. Mm-hmm. Almost 18 going on 30. That's amazing. <laughs> 
Kennedy, you and I had kind of a highlight uh, this last uh, spring. Uh, we uh, went up to Chicago and uh, saw a concert together. Because yeah. I know that a uh, bucket list thing for you and me is to go see Taylor Swift in concert at some point. <laughs> Taylor, if you happen to be listening to this podcast, <laughs> uh, we want you to go on tour again. So that way we can go see because uh, you became a Taylor Swift fan in it 2020? Was the beginning of 2020. And she is the biggest Taylor Swift yes. fan. Her She's room is a biggest. shrine to Taylor Swift. Yeah, there, I don't think there's any other <laughs> Swifty bigger than Kennedy. No, no, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> I mean, all of her walls are just Taylor Swift. Uh -huh. That's not an exaggeration, bad, but. Not really. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It's but like, I just. just it was, I think it was like the February of 2020, it's like before COVID. And uh -huh. I, I just watched one of her concerts, and that's whenever it started. That's when it clicked for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was bored. I was like, oh, look, Taylor Swift. I remember wow. watching watching it happen. <laughs> just slowly talking yeah. about Taylor Swift but more and more. That's And that's my my first concert I went to was the one in spring, but that's like at the top of my bucket so list. So that's the one. And I know like, you know, this was, you became a fan like just right before COVID. So she yeah. hasn't been on tour since mm -hmm. then. So you're, we're just like waiting for waiting her to release for dates. Her but we did back in the spring, we were like, hey, for a warm up for Taylor Swift, we'll go see... Who do we go see? Olivia Rodrigo. Olivia Rodrigo. She's like a mini Taylor. In it's kind of a mini <laughs> Taylor Swift. And it was just kind of a warm up for us for like the real thing. But we went up Chicago. Yeah. And it was you, so fun. It was fun. It was like my favorite part of this year. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was great. Yeah. We went, we went uh, and had a nice dinner before. And then it was a little intimidating for me because there was like 5,000 teenage girls. Yeah. <laughs> All me. screaming and, all and passing screaming. out. Yes, yes, yeah. we did. We saw like what six girls, six pass, girls out pass out yeah. due to like heat and de de dehydration and all that. Yeah. It was crazy, but that was a fun time. I can't wait for uh, the Taylor Swift concert. It's oh, gonna be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then you recently just started serving in kids ministry around mm -hmm. here. So is that going okay? Yeah, it's going okay. Uh -huh. I mean, to be honest, it's a little bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's like there's so many little kids running around, but. Mm -hmm. are I'm just like glad that I'm able to help. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's 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 fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're doing it. Um, anything else, you guys? Did I miss anything? Anything else you want to talk about? Um, I don't know. Well. It's been awesome to have you guys yeah. on the podcast. Thank you for being kind and gracious with me. Um, I'm not a perfect dad, but uh, I'm doing my best and love you both dearly. And I believe that uh, God's going to do just incredible things. He already is uh, through your life. But uh, it's uh, honestly, I know I can speak for mamas as well. It gets the joy of our lives to mm -hmm. to be your parents and to watch you guys grow up. And uh, thank you for being willing to be vulnerable enough mm -hmm. to just kind of open up and uh, share with uh, your experience with uh, people and hope it's been encouraging to some others. Yeah. So uh, for those of you listening, um, please like, subscribe, and share this podcast with your friends. It helps us to get the word out, and we will see you next time. Thanks, girls. <laughs>